Hello Grade 11s, in this next video we're going to go over limiting reagents and percent yield. Now this will be done in two parts. It is uh, It could be a longer lesson. I don't want this video to be longer than 25-30 minutes, so we're going to divide it into two parts. First part is going to be on limiting reagents, the concept, and we'll look at uh, a simple question. The next part is going to be on a, on a more typical question, and we'll look at the percent yield, which won't take too long. Okay, right, so first video, let's get started. Um, but before we do really dive into limiting reagents, let's review a bit of stoichiometry. Here are here is a question of a typical um, stoichiometry problem that exists in a one to three to two ratio. Here we're given the number of moles of hydrogen gas, and we're being asked to figure out the number of moles of product. Now there's an assumption being made here that's written sometimes and sometimes it's not. The assumption here is that you have an excess amount of nitrogen so the other reactant don't waste it's basically saying don't worry about this um, what really defines the amount of products being produced is the number of moles of hydrogen which is given okay in our first method of solving we've looked at uh, the factor label method uh, we need the number of moles of ammonia right this is what we need this is what we're given and we're going to multiply by mole ratio which is really our conversion factor right mole H2, mole H2 cancel out, and you're left with moles of ammonia, which rounded to nearest thick sig fig is 0.117 moles. And you're done. Now we can solve this again, not using the factor label method, now using a proportion method, right? We know that the mole ratio between the two are three to two. All we then do is make sure that we have the same thing on the, on the left-hand side, uh, hydrogen on the left or ammonia on the right, right? You cross multiply and solve for X. Another way to set this up, so, or is you can just have two um, mole of ammonia over three moles of H2, right, is equal to, and then since we're trying to solve for ammonia, we can put the X here, right, notice that ammonia are all lining up, so just like the other method, which is the same thing, just used a bit differently, um, you want Ammonia at all the top, moles of ammonia, let's say that's X over uh, moles of H2, which is given to you in the question. And you'll see you'll end up, this is a one, seven, six, you'll end up with the same answer. All right, cross multiply, solve for X, and you end up with the same answer rounded to the nearest sig fig. All right, that's enough practice on stoichiometry. Uh, let's now start limiting reagents. So limiting reagent is a reactant that will be used up completely. So in other words, it'll simply run out. <clears throat> and because it's going to run out, it's going to define how much product is, is being made. Um, your excess reagent is the other reagent that exists in larger quantities and is required. So you're going to have an excess left or you're going to have some leftover. OK. So in this more practical example, um, let's just say, pretend this is a recipe for pizza. We have one, to make one pizza, we need one ball of dough, two tomatoes, and eight slices of pepperoni. So here we have three balls of dough. In our pantry, we have three balls of dough. We have four tomatoes and 24 slices of pepperoni. Question is, how many pizzas can we make? Okay, well, if we're just considering the balls of dough, we can make three pizzas. And if one recipe means we have, we need two tomatoes to make the pizza, then here, because we have four, we can make two pizzas. 24 slices of pepperoni are what we have. We only need eight per pizza, so it turns out we can make three, piece, three pieces of, or rather three pizzas in uh, using these 24 slices. <clears throat> um, what will define how many pizzas we can make? It turns out it's the, hopefully you're thinking the same thing I am, it's the number of tomatoes. Right, then we'll have, that means, an excess of dough and pepperoni because the number of tomatoes defines how much pizza we can make. That is therefore our limiting reagent. Okay, so what will distinguish a regular stoichiometry question to a limiting reagent question is whenever you're given the amounts of all the reactants. Now this can be either in the form of moles or grams. Whenever you're given grams of both reactants in the question, then you know it's a limiting reagent question. Or if you're given the moles of both reactants in your question, then you know it's it's also a limiting reagent question. Okay, first example. Um, I call this a simpler example because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. 
So you really have to do just about half the amount of work. Because you can compare the number of moles of carbon to the number of moles of oxygen, you can see which one exists in lesser quantities, and that's going to be your limiting reagent. <clears throat> so um, here, we know it's a limiting reagent because we're given the moles, rather than moles, with grams of carbon and grams of oxygen. When you don't know what to do, you should always, or even if you do, always figure out the number of moles. 24 grams divided by molar mass, 96 by its molar mass, and we get two moles of carbon and three moles of oxygen. Now this only works, this process, this easier process, only works when it's in a one-to-one -one ratio. Look, one-to-one. -one. And what I mean by process is the process of comparison. You can now compare two moles of carbon and three moles of oxygen. Which one exists in lesser quantities? That is your carbon. So carbon is a limiting reagent. And you're done. Okay, next video we'll begin with uh, this question. We'll end here.